Try to guess how much money Harvard has in its endowment. Eh, it's a little low. Try again. OK, better, but actually a touch high and not a real number. Close. But Secretariat is the name of the thoroughbred racehorse that won the 1973 Triple Crown. The correct answer is Harvard's endowment is presently worth $50 billion. That's more money than Jesus had. OK, next question. How much of our tax dollars does the federal government give to Harvard every year? Ah, I see why you might think that. It makes sense given that Harvard has more money than the GDP of over 120 countries. It doesn't really need any tax dollars. But the correct answer is B, Secretariat. Sorry, sorry, I was reading the prompter upside down again. The correct answer is D, give or take $670 million every year. Over the last five years, the federal government has awarded $33 billion to these prestigious, well-funded Ivy League schools, plus the trampy safety school cousins of Stanford and Northwestern, all of whose graduates make more money than you and outrank you forever in our country's weird caste system. And each of their universities has big-ass, swollen, and gorged endowments that are worth billions of dollars. So why are we taking tax dollars from the 99% of us that didn't go to any of these schools, let alone the two-thirds of Americans who didn't graduate college at all, and giving it to the incubation chambers of tomorrow's trust fund tycoons? You might say something like, well, knowledge is important and society benefits from an educated populace. More people will understand Fraser and oblique Star Trek references. OK, I agree with you. So why don't we give that $33 billion in public funding to community colleges or public universities? Knowledge is a good thing. Slather it on. And Frasier was an excellent 90s era sitcom. Now, I could be wrong. I did get a graduate degree from a university that once gave a doctorate to a horse. But that horse was secretary. <laughs> Harvard's endowment grows faster than its annual tuition costs. It literally has enough money to cover the tuition for every student forever without any financial assistance from taxpayers. Whether they do or not is their business. It's their money. My issue is why we're giving tax dollars, our money, to elite exclusive institutions. Money that they don't need, that could be better allocated to community colleges or paying down the national debt or returning to taxpayers or horse tuition. Why is the federal government giving billions of tax dollars to Ivy League schools? Is this really just an upward transfer of wealth from the unwashed taxpayers to the future highfalutin? The answer is B. Kinda. Most of the money the federal government gives to universities that matriculate the rich villain kids from 80s movies is not to help with tuition. Only about 16% of federal funding to the Ivy Leagues goes to tuition assistance and work-study programs. About $5 billion over the last five years. That's still more than twice what the Department of Education awards Votech schools. But to be fair, yes, a minority of federal tax dollars are taken from you to provide tuition assistance to your future boss. Only $5 billion. Around 80% of tax dollars go to research grants, which are a lot easier to justify. Fancy pants universities do have some of the finest research facilities in the world and the hottest scientists. For example, maybe the Department of Defense pays $50 million to Yale to give gorillas heat vision. Or NASA contracts Brown to conduct clinical trials on anti-gravity gravy. Good things that would benefit the taxpayer. Those are both cooler and arguably less stupid than most of the other things the federal government pisses your money away on. A lot of the time, it's just giving money to sugar barons or figuring out ways to kill people in countries I've never heard of. So research grants are arguably pretty benign, potentially even helpful. But only $4 billion of the $33 billion the federal government has given to fancy schools over the last decade came in the form of contracts where the federal government allotted funding for specific objectives. Most of that money goes to more general research grants. And for every dollar of specific strings attached research grants universities obtain from the federal government, they charge an average of 64 cents for overhead. Not the grant itself, just, you know, keeping the lights on, janitorial staff, facility maintenance, administrator salaries, stashing the money away in their swollen, engorged, heaving endowments. The federal government began sending money to university scientific research programs en masse during the Cold War as part of our national program to irritate or blow up communists. Universities understandably said, we would like some of that scratch, but we also need basic money for overhead to execute the research. So we'll take that DARPA funding to capture and weaponize Bigfoot, but you'll have to set aside some cash for us to maintain the shock collars. And the federal government said, all right, if there's a shot Bigfoot strangles Castro, we'll do it. 
Initially, overhead was capped at 8% of research. So the Defense Department would give a grant to teach American dolphins to insult communist dolphins. And the feds would also pay for the overhead on that, the dolphin shrimp or dolphin condoms. I don't know how this stuff works. In any event, 8% was the cap on the overhead. Then that was raised to 15%. And finally, in 1966, the cap was removed altogether. The federal government said, just let us know how much you think overhead will cost a given project and be sure to use an arbitrary cost formula that's super easy to inflate the numbers on. The result, Bigfoot hardly strangled Castro at all. And by most accounts, Fidel liked it. Meanwhile, with no caps on overhead, guess what happened? You're not gonna believe this. You're not gonna believe this. Universities suddenly started charging more for general overhead. By 1991, Stanford was charging an average of 78% per federal research grant on indirect costs. Until, and I'm not making this up, Congress discovered that they'd use some of that money to fund a yacht. I would like to repeat this. Stanford inflated its indirect costs and used the research money in part for administrators to redecorate their offices, purchase silk sheets, buy flower arrangements, go on a trip to Paris, and depreciation on a literal f***ing yacht. Then lumped all of that stuff under indirect research costs. They had to give more than a million dollars back to the federal government for, you know, embezzling tax dollars, but with elbow patches. The scandal got so bad there, and also MIT, and Johns Hopkins, and UCLA, and Harvard, that Congress threatened to cap overhead funding again. I expect that kind of shit from Johns Hopkins, but UCLA? Astonishingly, with threats of caps looming like Bigfoot over a commie dictator, overhead expenses at universities suddenly dropped. How about that? But since then, they've been creeping up again like a horny dolphin stock in Ho Chi Minh. Today, around every dollar of research grant the federal government gives to a university, the university gets an additional 50 to 60 cents in indirect costs, which are negotiated between the feds and each university. Now, far be it from me to suppose that anyone in the public sector would, under any circumstance, ever, inflate research costs to get more money. As we all know, selfishness is entirely limited to evil corporations and rapacious billionaires, while all public servants undergo Vulcan Kalinar training to purge themselves of self-interest relevant reference. Today, it doesn't look like universities are writing off yachts or trips to Paris under federal research grants, but it does kind of look like they're overinflating their costs so they can grab a big educational slush pile to do whatever they want with, basically converting overhead fees into elitist fun money. Instead of boats and orchids, they can use that slush money to hire more administrators, beef up DEI programs, or just pump the money into their already throbbing tumescent endowments. Pretty much anything except what we gave it to them for. All while Castro's pervert zombie remains unstrangled. Over the last five years, the 10 universities that got the most federal funding, combined $33 billion, also grew their collective endowments by $65 billion. Part of that federal money was for tuition assistance they clearly did not need. And then the rest was some combination of, yes, legitimate research funding, but also overhead and maintenance fees, which could effectively just be general revenue. If Harvard alumni want to give billions to Harvard, whatever, private organization, blah, 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 dolphin throuble, yada, yada, yada. But what the federal government gives Harvard in tax money is our business. Right now, the median endowment for American universities, including state schools like the one I got kicked out of, is $203 million, whereas the poorest Ivy League has $6 billion in its endowment. If a private elite institution has enough money in its endowment to make tuition free, taxpayers shouldn't be giving them money for tuition assistance. We have limited government resources. If we're going to give tax dollars to higher ed, can we at least prioritize schools who need it over schools who have endowments literally larger than the GDP of Uganda? And if we're gonna give billions of dollars in research grants to universities, let's cap what universities can charge for overhead. I understand that padding budgets is fun and lucrative and a way to bond with your colleagues. I charge reason $17 to make this video, but it only cost me $14.30. <laughs> The European Union caps their research overhead at 25%. How about we do that? There, I said it. We should be like Europe. Are you happy? Let's all drive mopeds and drink espresso as long as we cap our goddamn research overhead. <laughs> long story short, education is good, knowledge is great, dolphins are fun but degenerate. However, when it comes to our tax dollars, let's quit giving money to universities who don't need it when they don't need it. Now, if you'll excuse me, 
We're gonna go find the corpse of Fidel Castro and strangle that SOB. Come on, Bigfoot, to the yacht!